Okay, it's about a week later. I uh, ordered my rebuild kit and a proportioning valve. It's a Wildwood proportioning valve. It comes with a brake light switch, which I do not have on a car. Maybe one day I'll hook it up. It comes with a little wiring harness for it. It's part number 889-545-066746 in case someone's wanting to know what that is. You get no directions with it, but it looks pretty simple. You've got a front in, a rear in, rear out, no, front out, front out, and rear out. And my front out needs to go into my line lock, or maybe I'll wire my line lock, go straight from the master cylinder into the line lock, and then out of the line lock and into this. I'm not sure how I'm going to do that yet. But uh, I'll show you how it looks when I get it done. But uh, we also, let's see, I have a rebuild kit. Basically all it is is just seals. Sorry about the fan noise, but it's still hot and humid even though we should be having fall weather by now. Which I really like and we wish we'd get here. I know it means winter's coming, but I still love fall weather and hate hot, humid weather. Anyway, here's, we've got... Um, Four seals for each side. I'm going to rebuild both calipers. I'll show the assembly of one of them. And you have to buy the, the uh, piston seals and the body seals separately. I've got more of these than I need. I went ahead and got eight of them just in case. And actually, I think this only takes three. You get one here, one there, and there are no grooves for those little seals here, and you get one here that's flat, nothing there. And that's all there is to rebuilding them. I'm going to, I've already scotch bright one of the pistons. I want to get that little groove there. I was thinking that might be causing it to not release all the way. That and my proportioning valve setup is not what it should be. And we're going to make that all right. I may have to do some uh, research on how to plumb that up, but we'll get it right this time. And I also ordered some new flexible lines, steel braided lines. Now these have been on here for a long, long time. And as you can see, that's crimped right there. Not good. That could be my problem. A friend of mine brought that to my attention. Check your flexible lines. He thought I had rubber lines. That's what he called them. But I said, no, I have stainless steel flexible ones. But they're still, maybe these are rubber inside. I don't know. These are PTFE though. So should be more resistant to brake fluid but I don't think we had a breakdown of the brake line on the inside here's what I see that is going on now keep in mind the car is in the air and the suspension is stretched all the way out not like it would be at ride height but if you look can you see that yeah, maybe I'll have to get up inside of here I hope this camera doesn't blur out this close. But if you can see what's going on right here. Yeah, um, now at ride height, well, actually, yes, all this travels together. So, yes, that, when I turn this car all the way, this is what happens. It's a miracle I haven't um, ruptured those lines. And these, this has been set up like it, this for about 10 years now. So, criticize if you want. Something I didn't catch. Luckily, it didn't give me a problem. Well, it's giving me a problem now, I think. That's probably why they're not releasing all the way. But uh, we're going to make that right. Hopefully, what I ordered will fix that. Let's see if I can find them. I've got some 45-degree fittings and some 90s. I'm not sure which will work best, so I ordered both. If you're not sure, order everything. There's some 90s. And there's a 45. Sorry, my camera's still zoomed in, I think. No, it's not. But anyway, we're going to set this camera up, and we're going to put one caliper together real quick. Get all that back on the car. Put my lines on. Do the other side. Figure out how I'm going to plumb it. I'm probably not going to do any videoing when I plumb it. Plumb the brake lines. Uh, I'll just show you what I come up with after I'm done. Polish some of this. This little groove here is probably corrosion because this part is sticking out of the caliper and it's exposed to 
outside elements and gets all corroded and stuff. Plus it feels like it's got a slight groove there. I think it's just dirt, maybe even a little rust. But I'm going to use some of this stuff here. All it is is penetrating oil. You can use WD-40, brake fluid, whatever you want to use. I don't really like the smell of brake fluid, so I only use it when I have to. I'm just going to polish this off, and it polishes it off pretty quick. Just to make sure those pistons can go all the way back in. Make sure that little groove of dirt, which is all it is, I thought it was a groove actually wore in them. But it's, I think it's just dirt, maybe a little bit of corrosion. I don't think it's rust because these are stainless. But I'm just going to polish this off. So that hopefully it'll keep them from hanging up. Just some Scotch Brite that I picked up at, um, I think I got it at a bargain supply. Clean it off with a rag. Don't take much to get them clean. Make sure it goes down. Inside the bore. Just make sure I get all my dirt out of it. And they slide down in there good. Now I got three more to do or two more to do because I already done one and we'll put these seals in and put this thing together. Let's go ahead and put this thing together. Not really that much to it. Thought I'd show the assembly anyway. Anything else I'll pro pretty much in this video I'll pretty much just show you what I did and show you if it fixes my problem. Got these soaked in brake fluid in case you're wondering. Let's see how these work in there. Hopefully they won't give me too much trouble. Should I try to tap them in? I'm sure someone is going to criticize that. Let's see if they'll go in. Oh, they're going in. Okay, they're all the way bottomed out right now. Let's make the pads easier to put on. Put a little brake fluid on the piston too. I failed to do that on the other. so. Okay, got it bottomed out. Not sure if that's a bad idea or not, but we'll see. I'll let you know. Okay, we need a small rubber seal. I don't have the package opened up yet. Got to take a few seconds to cut that open. And of course it's going to It's an adult proof package. I can't get it open. There's that. Got to open up two more little packages. Need some scissors and I have some in the house, but I don't want to go to the house. Scissors, nice, something. Plastic packages don't like to open up. See if they'll tear. Nope, they don't tear either. Can't open it. military chopper. I don't know what they're doing around here. We're not that far from Fort Knox, you know. 
every now and then you see them here, which we're, we're probably about 30 miles away, something like that. Anyway, got a spacer. It goes here. I think this one goes there. I don't know for sure when we put the rest of it together. And this other spacer. I think it goes like that. Then I need another rubber o ring. Which means I gotta fight another little package. I should open my packages before I start the video. It's always something I forget to do before I start filming. That's the way it goes. Hey, this one's already got a tear in it. How convenient. Wouldn't have been if I'd have lost it. No, I can't get it out. There we go. Finally got it out. Okay, I'll put another seal on this spacer. And I do believe it goes here. If I remember right, let me look at the body. Let's see. Yep. It's got to go like that. I don't even know why that seal's there. Because there's no hole here. No hole there. This one does have a passage. And that's the only way this can go together. So. Yep. It's got to go that way. So we'll get the other pistons in. Now we bolt it together. So these are not the biggest, baddest calipers. They have the uh, big six-piston calipers. I don't know if they're for a bigger disc than I have or not. I believe I've got 10-inch disc. Not the biggest, but it's, like, it's kind of a light car. So They've worked, just that they won't release anymore. Actually, they haven't for a long time, but it's finally getting bad enough where well, I believe it has actually been the problem with the car being inconsistent all along. Maybe. We'll see. I've gotten to where I've tried so many different things that I thought was wrong. Nothing works. I got to where I have my doubts no matter what I find now. But We're going to figure it out. This used to be a consistent car. And actually it was when I first started back into racing. If you remember my videos from last year when it came out of the trailer after sitting for six years, it was pretty consistent. A little slower than I thought it was as everything was adjusted, but uh, it was consistent. But I say this is why. I'm not going to torque them, just go by feel. These are aluminum, you got to be careful, you can strip them out. But, that's all there is to it. That, and we can, I guess, go ahead and put in our brake pads. I'm not replacing the brake pads, shame on me for that. But. They're still good. I think. Oh, they go this way. There's a hole for the pin that holds them in. These just go in here. And this one goes here. It's going to. 
it'll stay in place after you get it over the rotor and there is a pin it looks like a nail basically actually you could use a nail if you lost this because that's exactly what it looks like but this is the original pin with these brakes so don't think it's something that I dug up looks like something I would do though something to beat on that I won't hurt. I don't think beating on a file would be... That's even below my standards. Especially with all the dry pins I have laying around. But yeah, that's pretty much how they go like that. Bottom that out, and we just bend this. Whoa, the thing's stiff. Try something with a little bit, a little bit more solid here. And it shouldn't be able to go nowhere. I hope. Those will just have to hang loose until we get it on the car. At least they'll go on easy. Being as there's nothing pushing the pistons out. I'm going to start. I don't know whether to try my 90 degree fittings or 45 degree fittings first. Okay. If I remember right, a spacer goes, this bigger, thicker spacer goes here, goes here on that knurled insert there. It's got a knurl on the outside of it. And we've got these thin spacers which also go on top of them and are not going to stay there. By themselves. So I'm going to put them on one at a time. it in, pushing on it so I can get the boat started. And there goes one of my spacers. That's okay, put it back on. There it goes again. Should have glue it. Probably wouldn't hurt. Wouldn't hurt a thing. Not going to do it though. There we go. Got my bolt lined up. And we just bolt that thing in there. That's all there is to that. You know, I don't mind rebuilding the calipers. I don't mind making new brake lines and replumbing, but what I'm not looking forward to is bleeding the brakes. I hate bleeding brakes. Let me see. There's a good way to bleed these four piston calipers, which reminds me while I'm thinking of it. Yep, yeah, I got a bleeder screw taken out. We don't want to forget about that. Somebody's burning something. That's not something burning. There we go. It's more than tight enough. We'll put that bleeder screw in, I promise. Alright, it looks like the 90 degree fitting is the way to go. As you can see, I've got it turned all the way to the right, and we have no contact. It doesn't even put this in a bind anymore. I'm going to turn the wheel the other way. See what it looks like. Pretty sure that's going to be no big deal either. As you can see, we are still, you, know, you can't see through the control arm, but it's, it's still hitting there because I haven't done that one yet. And that looks pretty good right there. And um, it does not rub the tire. As you can see, I got some skinnies on here. Lay the camera down for a minute.
looks like. Sorry about that. Ooh, get away from this hot light. As you can see, nothing's wrong there. We'll go ahead and turn it back the other way. Yeah, that doesn't put any bind on that. Now, I can't believe I've gone all these years and never noticed a problem with that. Like I said, lucky nothing went wrong. The wheel stayed pretty close to its position. I don't think there's any danger of that rubbing. Any at all. I don't want to tie it down any because it'll make it not want to travel the other way. I think that's going to be fine like that. Yep. 90 degree fittings away to go. Make sure it looks good straight, which I'm pretty sure it should. Oh yeah, we're good. Alright, so that issue is fixed. I shouldn't be messing up any more of those flexible brake lines. And um, the next time I do any videoing on this, I'm going to go ahead and show you what it looks like after I plumb it, get it bled. And we'll just tell you if it works or not.